I'm a father like I'm Naruto. Keep the blade on me, Ichigo. Who really wanna go toe for toe? TTR from Tokyo. Diamonds flipping up on the stove. Lucky man like a four leaf cloak. Diamonds wanna go. Hello everyone, this is Nagato's Revenge, and welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, I'm basically going to be showcasing on how to set up SD to Vita for your modded PlayStation Vita. With that being said, please be sure to follow my social media so you'll know the latest hacking guides and tutorials on my channel. And with that being stated, let's go ahead and get started on the prerequisites. So things you'll need for this um, video is a modded PlayStation Vita, of course, that is either running Hankaku, Echon Core, or the new Trinity hack that was just released. Um, your Vita needs to be either between firmware 3.60 or 3.70. You'll also need the latest version of Vita Shell. You'll also need FileZilla FTP client or a USB charging cable that came with your Vita. Um, I do recommend the USB charging cable for this method since we're going to be transferring over a lot of files that are going to be onto your memory card aka ux0 so if you have a lot of games pictures music on you know your playstation vita especially if you filled up like a 64 gigabyte memory card please use the usb method if you want you know faster uh, transfer speeds but with that being stated as well you either need a micro sd card you also need an sd d to vita adapter you need tf card plug-in tool the actual vpk you if your pc doesn't have a sd slot you will need a sd card reader as well and also last but not least these two items you also need is the win32 disk imager and also the zz blank dot image file and with that being stated as well i'll have two links in the description below to show you guys on how to you know purchase the the sd to vita and also the um sd card reader so as shown here this is the sd card reader and this is the one i am using for this video it's pretty cheap it's not too much as well and here is also the sd to vita adapter as well and it was only like ten dollars but before i even get stated on with along with the other stuff i just want to state some pros and benefits to owning the sd to vita adapter well one of the you know pros to having an SD to Vita adapter is cheaper than the original proprietary Vita memory card so if you guys do a quick Google search or you guys are on eBay you could you know if you want a 64 gigabyte PlayStation Vita memory card they're well over like 90 to 100 dollars so it's pretty insane also um it's easier to transfer files and data over so if you have a pc and you know with the you know either sd card adapter or just a pc that has a sd um built into it you can you know transfer files easier that way just by copying and pasting also with the sd to vita adapter you can use them on multiple systems as if you know the memory card was locked to one psn account um that's you know many many major pros and benefits for that but talking about the cons and disadvantages to owning the SD to Vita certain plugins may have issues with SD to Vita so what I've um you know mostly tested so all the major plugins such as you know no NPDRM refood or anything really um that is prominent today and anything that's basically is an auto plugin works with SD to Vita since what I've tested but you may run into certain plugins if they're older and may need be not updated for the adapter and maybe you run into some issues into the games and such and such also the big uh, disadvantage that I noticed was giving up your PS Vita cartridge slot for the SD to Vita adapter so if you're like someone like me who likes to collect um you know certain games via by you know the actual physical copy or like the cartridge um you're giving up that slot because the adapter has to be you know placed within it so this process could work however i do have a solution to that on how to dump your you know cartridge based games to your vita like it was an actual like psn download because even um there are a lot of games on the vita that never made it to the psn store and they only were you know just released via cartridge like a lot of japanese otame games and stuff like that but i'll have a, either in the link in the description below or somewhere in the card right here um on how to do that process as well but last but not least i just want to give a special thanks out to the official flow for you know just creating all of these cool programs and you know releasing all these hacks for the vita i just want to give credit out to the, the hero gac for you know uh, developing a lot of uh, homebrew such as the tf card plugin we use in a day and also auto plugin and i just want to shout out to a big you know thanks to my subscribers and supporters who watch my channel on a daily basis and leave me you know with you know critiques and stuff but with that being said let's go ahead and go into the tutorial
all right guys so assuming that y'all guys followed all of the prerequisites as i stated in the intro we could go ahead and get started on the pc portion of this tutorial so first things first go ahead in the description below and download all of the files as shown here so you need to download the win32 disk imager you need to download tf card plugin tool vita shell 1.98 the latest version and also zzblink.image once you have those files onto your desktop, what you need to do now is go ahead and plug in your SD card, either if you have the SD slot or the item that I showed in early in the video. If you do have that, then you're good to go. But as shown here, this is my SD card. And what we need to do first is make sure that it's our, is formatted to XFAT, excuse me. So the way how to do that is basically right click on it, scroll all the way down to properties. And then from here, guys, if I are right here where it says file system, it states that it's on XFAT. If your thing is on XFAT, you're good to go and you can skip whatever I'm saying in the next like two minutes. But if your thing says it's on NTFS, what we need to do is change that. So the way how we do that is go ahead and hit cancel over this. Right click over USB drive and then we need to go to format. So as shown here, where it says capacity, keep it the same as your USB drive states. If your file system is on NTFS, go ahead and toggle it over to XFAT. And then right here, where it says allocation unit size, go ahead and hit default allocation size. For your volume label, that's what you can name your USB drive of choice. I'm just going to go ahead and keep mine blank. And then where it says right here, where uh, quick format, make sure that it's toggled and it has a check mark. And then you could go ahead and hit start. And then from there, you'll get a window that will pop up on your desktop that states that by formatting this, it will erase all of your data off this USB drive. So I bought this USB drive, or I mean my micro SD, not too long ago. And with that being said, if you do have items on here, make sure to back it up. So if you could put it on your desktop or another USB drive, that is fine. But make sure you do back it up because once you hit this OK button, as shown here what it will do is basically wipe the drive clean and then you will get another window that states that the format has been successful and it's been completed once you get that and assuming that you're now on xfat you could go ahead and hit ok and now what we need to do is go ahead and focus on formatting our usb drive to, to have the z blank dot image and i'll show you guys on how to do that so right here we need to go ahead and run rent 32 disk imager and it may take a second on your screen to pop up you probably won't see this because i'm have to run in this as administrator but once that uh you know the installation starts popping up the window you could go ahead and accept the agreement and you know just read over it if you really feel like to and then go ahead and just hit next next again um we could go ahead and create a desktop shortcut just for this tutorial and then once when uh, Win32 Disk Imager has installed, we could go ahead and hit finish. And from there, what we need to do is go ahead and get exit out this TXT. We need to go find our image file. So this is our image file right here. In my case, it's on my desktop. Yours may be in your download folder unless you dragged it over to your desktop. But what we need to do now is go ahead and select our file via our desktop. So as shown here, Go into desktop and then go into zzblank.image. As shown here, we it's selected. Now we gotta go ahead and find our device. So make sure that your device um is your micro SD and it's not anything else. And the way how you could check that if you go into your uh folder tab and then see our USB drive here, this is my SD card, and you could just check via by properties and then see if it's on like XFAT as stated. And you could check the uh, gigabyte size as well. That's how one look at detail. You could leave this thing blank, leave this thing blank right here. And what we need to do is go ahead and write our image. And then you basically will get this little thing just stating that by overwriting this, it can't corrupt the device. Just go ahead and hit yes. And then once you get this little notification that says write successful, what should happen is basically uh, a window should pop up. If it doesn't, we need to reformat our hard drive one more time to XFAT. So we could go ahead and X this out right here. Go back into our flash drive as shown here, USB drive E. And yeah, see this is the window that should have popped up. You need to format this disc before you can use it. Go ahead and just format it. It's the same thing as stated before. So make sure your thing is on XFAT, allocation unit size to default allocation. Make sure it's on quick format as well. And then go ahead and hit start. 
hit OK, and then you should get this uh, window that says that process has been completed. So now we basically got uh, two steps out of the way. So we did the window disk imager and we also basically formatted our USB drive or our micro SD to have this. Now what we need to do is go ahead and install TF card plugin. And also if you don't have Vita shell already installed, um, have that installed as well. But I already did that for this process. So what we need to do now is go ahead and open up FileZilla. I'll have a link in the description below for that program as well. And we could just leave this to the side. And now what we need to do is go ahead and go to our PlayStation Vita. All right guys, so as shown here, I'm basically on my PlayStation Vita. I'm running Henkaku Enzo 3.60, so I don't have to run HON Core or you know the Trinity exploit first. But if you do have to do those steps, make sure you do run it for this process. But what we need to do now is go ahead and run Vita Shell. Go ahead and start it. And now depending on how you want to transfer your files is very important. So I do recommend that your thing is on USB. But for me, since this is a new Vita and I have literally nothing on it, I'm going to be doing the FTP method. But if you guys want to go ahead and switch over to uh, FTP, all you would have to do is hit start on your thing. And then you could toggle left and right on your D-pad to basically switch over on how you want to transfer your files. But if you have, like I stated before a lot, go ahead and use USB. But in this case, what you need to do now, if you're doing FTP, go ahead and hit select. And then you should basically see your PlayStation Vita's IP. Either you can leave your Vita on the screen right now. But what we're going to do is go back to our PC as shown here. And I'm going to go ahead and run FileZilla. And then we need to go to 10, 0, 0. And your IP will be different than mine's. Always the port for the Vita is 1337. Let me make it a little widescreen so you can see. Um, if you do get this little error message in FileZilla, just go ahead and hit OK. And if you don't see all your directories, make sure you untick Unsafe Homebrew. But what we need to do first is go ahead into UX0. And we need to go ahead and just drag and drop this into UX0. It's probably going to tell me to overwrite it since I already had the file there. Or maybe I didn't. Oh, I think I had two versions. But anyways, once you uh, drag and drop, you know, TF card plugin of your of your choice, what we need to do now is go ahead and take our whole directory of UX0, aka our memory card right here, and then copy it over. So by doing that, if you hit control A on your keyboard and then go ahead on your USB or your micro SD and go ahead and find it back on your desktop and drag and drop all of your files from your UX0 or aka your memory card to this folder right here or basically the root to your um, micro SD card so that's what I'm going to be doing here and as you see all my files are transferring over and it won't take too long but what I'm going to be doing as well is just pause the video right here and then once that process is fully finished I'll show you and compare and contrast that all my files has transferred over once your files has transferred over it's the same method via with USB um once it's all done I'll come back and then tell you the next step a few moments later so as shown here guys real quick basically all my files has successfully transferred over as stated here you should get a notification if you were doing this the filezilla ftp method but if we go ahead and hover over our micro sd card all of our files let me go ahead and put this all the way forward so you can see all of my files are basically here as well now what we need to do is go ahead and safely eject out our sd card from our pc and then it will close down and now what we need to do is go ahead and take our SD to Vita adapter and also the micro SD card and plug it into our PlayStation Vita once that process is done um, go ahead and back on to Vita show and I'll tell you the next step so I'll be doing that right here in a second I'll meet you guys back once I'm done all right guys so I am back on the Vita as shown here what we need to do now is go ahead back in the Vita shell scroll all the way down and what we need to do is go ahead and install in the latest version of the TF card plugin VPK which I'm doing here right now so make sure you do have unsafe homebrew on tech so you can install this VPK because it won't allow you if you don't have that um, option you know set in Hancock settings 
but once that process is done what we need to do now is go ahead and back out from Vita shell go ahead and press circle you should see basically tf card plug in back onto your live area and now we can go ahead and run it and i'll explain a little bit on how to operate this so basically to accept is circle so if you've ever played any japanese vita game or any japanese playstation game before circles accept access to decline but um i'm gonna go to the two options we need to focus on now so the first option is just stating that if you want to set your sd to vita adapter as like a secondary storage which is uma0 and then still have your memory card as your primary uh, storage is ux0 then go ahead and select that option but in my case i want to make my sd to vita adapter um basically my primary storage so i can install games via that way so this is the second option right here what is going to happen if you do you know depending on what you decide on what you need to do is go ahead and hit circle you'll get a little uh, uh operation check message and saying that are you sure you want to proceed with this go ahead and hit yes and then you'll get another uh, message that states that you're going to have to reboot your device. So as shown here, I'm going to hit yes. You probably can't see my screen right now, which is okay. But what I'm going to do is pause the video right here. Um, boot up back my Vita so you guys can see. And then I'm going to showcase that my Vita states that I have, you know, 59 gigabytes in storage. So I'll meet you guys back once that process is done. So as shown here, guys, I'm back on my PlayStation Vita it basically rebooted what we need to do now is check if basically our adapter is working so we need to go ahead and go into Vita shell as shown here and then if we go over to ux0 as you see here basically if you remember early in the video i was just using my internal memory since i have a playstation vita 2000 but as shown here i basically have my 64 gigabyte sd card installed and now from here once you always reboot your vita this is the primary way that your vita is going to read your basically your memory from so that's the end of the tutorial guys if you have any questions on how to set this up please be sure to leave a comment down below in the, you know the comment section uh, but with that being said my name is Nagato and I'm signing out thank you guys for watching I appreciate all of y'all